I'm Yardar, this is The Catch. It's mid-December in Situate, Massachusetts. We're heading out on the Gabriella Rose with Captain Mark Gustafson to catch groundfish. Groundfish are any number of species that live on the ocean floor. This trip was full of surprises. Watch till the end. Oh, shit. Holy shit. How long have you been fishing for? Uh, about 20 years full time, like right out of high school. Grew up doing it as a kid part time. How did you get into it? My father. I mean, he's, he's fished his whole life, so born into it. Born into it. Is that a blessing or a curse, do you think? A little of both. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. you, you enjoy it though? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you like most about it? Well, that's being on the water. Freedom. Sometimes freedom. I mean, it depends. Depends on the regulations and whatnot, but. So, regulations, let's talk about that. We wanted to go out for ground fish. Yeah. And what I understand is we're actually going to go for lobster with the, with the bottom trawl. Both. We're going to, yeah, it'll be a mixed bag. We're going to see if we can get our limit on lobsters and then work on ground, grab some flounder, some cod. It'll be a mixed bag of stuff all day. So those, those fisheries that we're targeting today, those are each under different permits? Ground fish we're allowed, it's like a yearly limit we get. So like when you run out, you either have to stop fishing or you can buy more quota. Things like lobster, skate, monkfish, stuff like that that have daily limits. So like if you can make a few bucks on that stuff and then you can grab more ground, you can spread your ground fish out. In the last 20 years, re regulations have changed a lot. There's been um, a lot of conservation measures. What do you see today in the, in the catch, the quality of the catch and, and what you see out in the water for, for volume? We actually spend more time running from fish than we do targeting fish because they've done such a, they've cut things so bad and done such a poor job of uh, assessing the stocks. That's why they cut the haddock because they hadn't done a survey in three years. So they said they have to cut our haddock 85% because they had no data. The most abundant things in the Gulf of Maine are cod, haddock, and white hake. We're fishing areas, we're, right now we're fishing areas that are like least likely to catch cod and still catching a lot of cod there. Really, so you're saying there's just much, much more fish out there than the government says there is? It's probably, the cod is probably 50 times what they say it is. Nope. So we have a beautiful sunrise. Maybe you can see it in the background. High rises of Boston are shimmering back from that beautiful sunrise. We've seen for about an hour and a half and uh, he's just slowed down. We're gonna get ready to set, so. We'll set up the cameras and see what that looks like. Setting out takes about 20 minutes. The net needs to pay out with the floats on top and the weights on the bottom to give it the vertical opening it needs to catch fish. You'll also notice the cable in front of the net has large rubber discs around it. These prevent the cable from chafing and also stir up a dust cloud, helping channel the fish into the mouth of the net. Next, we have to set the trawl doors. Those are those large metal things chained to the A-frame. After reaching the bottom, they'll plane out to either side of the boat about 280 feet apart. The doors will stretch the net horizontally, giving it a cone-shaped opening of about 50 feet. So we're just about done setting the net. Mark's, Mark's put the birds out to let the boat run a little bit smoother. She won't pitch and roll as much. It'll help keep the net smooth on the bottom so it won't bounce around and, and dig. You want to keep it nice and even, just skimming off the bottom. We're paying out a lot of cable to keep those doors really far out on the side of the boat. And you can hear him revving up to go a little bit faster to, 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 to get the speed of the boat right to tow the net at the right speed. Steve's the first mate on, on the Gabriella Rose. How long have you been working on this boat? I've been over here for two years. I'm 34. I am not married. I have a um, significant other, and I also have five kids. It's ranging from 16 to five. Wow, you're, you're a prolific man. Yeah. <laughs> um, how long have you been fishing for? On and off about 15 years. It's always been my dream job was to be a fisherman. How you like your boss? Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, you sure about that? Ah, uh, he is his days. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, we've never had a problem. And uh, how do you like having the observers on the boat? I hate them. Oh wow, that was, that was fast. <laughs> um... As a condition of the groundfish permit, all vessels must have a federal observer on board, whose job is to verify that regulations are followed and to record discards which will be charged against the total allowable catch. All right, so Ethan, observer on this trip, he's working on behalf of the government to record what the discards are and to help 
to help better manage the fishery. That way they can, you know, know what their real take is. Yeah. The weights that I that I take, the measurements that I take, these are trying to see where the fish are size-wise, breeding-wise during different seasons. Uh, hopefully, if I catch a lot of small flounders, they'll be looking at that as good breeding, growing sizes, and they'll actually increase quotas for the boats. So that's always the ultimate goal of it. So in the end, I mean, it's not just about measuring quantities, it's about looking at the health of the fishery, what recruitment levels are, what survival levels are, and, and just getting a, a better overall assessment of the stock. That's correct, right? We want to see what's under the water as best we can. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ethan. We've towed the net for about an hour, and we've brought up the doors and chained them to the rigging. Steve's going to talk us through retrieving the net. The cables that have come up, i got to unhook it and hook it over to the door so we, uh, we can get the, the uh, net on. Now the net, net's ready to come on. Uh, so now, right now, Mark is uh, laying, we call the laying the cables onto the drum. Uh, so the net comes up straight and it's not uh, off-centered. So Mark will just keep on taking the boat left and right um, until the net gets here. All right, yeah, the, uh, the haul time takes about 20 minutes. And uh, as soon as we get it on deck, we'll uh, pop the pucker, we'll drop the fish on deck, we'll close the pucker, and we'll shoot it right back out. Why, why are we going back out? Uh, because the wire got all me messed up. It didn't uh, didn't lay properly. Well, look at all that flounder. Blackbacks too, they like, should Yeah, yeah, they're good ones. But these look bad. I think these these should have really good yield on them. Yeah, oh yeah, they finally lay out nice. It's funny how the cod were all in the bottom of the net. Yeah, you know, they probably went through a school of them. They feel like if you look at like he's kind of a little scaled up. We might have hit a school early on. Yeah, he's scaled they up. They look yeah. like they might have been in there a little and bit. They're, they're all pretty big too. Wow, those are beautiful fish. Everything that comes on deck needs to be examined, sorted by type, and measured for legal size. Cod and haddock need to be gutted and gilled, but flatfish can go to market as is. The discards then go to Ethan who collects his data. The data collection process does slow the return time, potentially increasing mortalities. So here's a sample of what we got. Jonah crabs, lobsters, blackback flounder, yellowtail flounder, gray sole, dab, which is another type of flounder, and here we have some whiting. Really nice fat codfish. Over here, he's separated the skate because he's going to have to cut those. There's a big monkfish we just caught on that last toe. So look at those gnarly teeth. You can see they're angled back, even all the way here into the gullet. So anything that gets stuck in there is not coming out. It'll just swallow it whole. So we filled the hold with about 2,000 pounds of fish. But the most exciting part of the trip came from what we couldn't keep. This got a little hairy. Yep. Oh, we got a shock. No, a big one in here. Two. Oh, shit. Holy shit. Uh, we're going to have to pull them out and uh, yeah, get them back in. What kind of shark is that? Uh, those are two poor beagles. 
So we had, we didn't like fishing this area. It's not a good spot. They got three sharks, which which are problematic because they can't keep them. And they've got teeth. We got to work to let them go. Okay, they're feeding on mackerel? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. He's not happy. Doesn't help with them rubbing together either, does it? Oh, so close, man. Let me help you clear. That last toe was a. I was shocked when I saw those four huge sharks come out of there. Yeah. That was. He is wild. That was crazy. So you've never seen anything. No. We that, occasionally, maybe once a month, we'll catch one of them. Yeah, I've never I, seen that in my 20 years of doing this, 20 plus years of doing this. I've never seen that happen. And what was the, the tagging program you were telling me about before, uh, which we just were, ended, by the way? We were tagging them for the New England Aquarium. We uh, do a radio transmitter tag so they could follow where they're traveling, how deep they're going. So when they come up like that live, you would tag them, release them, and they were paying you how much per tag? Uh, it was seven fifty per tag. So if that was still happening and it just ended, you would have gotten an extra three grand for yeah. catching <laughs> those, <laughs> those sharks. I'm glad you got them all over yeah. alive and happy. I mean, I don't know if they were happy, but... <laughs> but they <laughs> looked, I mean, it. they swam right down, so yeah. I'm sure they, they, they looked pretty healthy going in. Yeah. yeah. And that one had to be 400, 500 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Massive. I was impressed watching you guys wrestling those sharks. It was, it was crazy. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, Mark and Steve, for having me aboard. It was a great trip. More fishing videos to come. If you're in a commercial fishery and would like to have me aboard, please reach out.